गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू योर कंप्यूटर लेक्चर आई रिक्वेस्ट ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स टू काइंडली रिमूव देयर वर्कबुक एंड अ पेंसिल एंड स्टूडेंट्स इन दिस वीडियो आई विल कवर टू पार्ट्स व्हिच इज सिमिलर कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द सेंट्रल प्रोसेसिंग यूनिट एंड व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट स्टोरेज डिवाइसेस components of central processing unit is from chapter number 1 so i request all the students to kindly open up page number 6 components of the central processing unit let us read The CPU is known as the brain of the computer. It manages all the operations of a computer system. It also accepts instructions to process data and provide the required output. The CPU is the most important part of the computer. The primary essential components of a CPU include the control unit, arithmetic and logic unit, and memory unit okay so as we are learning the components of central processing unit central processing unit is the full form for cpu which is also known as the brain of the computer why the brain of the computer because it controls manages the data or the instruction that we input and it gives us the desired output for us hence it is the most important part of the computer now cpu is further divided into different components which includes control unit arithmetic and logic unit and memory unit let's take a close look at this picture so it's controlling the input and it processes the information it stores the information and then gives us the desired output so let's try to understand further what are the different components of the central processing unit or the cpu before we go ahead further students i want you all to take a look at this picture this is an example of a motherboard on which all the various devices gets connected now the center part which you see in the silver is the cpu our cpu looks cpu is the small chipset or it's a small chip which is attached on the motherboard and what we look at this is known as the cpu cabinet which has all the connectors so don't confuse yourself cpu is a central processing unit it's like a small chip and the black box that you see is known as the cpu tower or the cpu cabinet so let's read further the control unit the control unit is a hardware component of the cpu it manages the activities of various parts attached to the computer such as monitor mouse and scanner the main task of the control unit is to handle various operations it provides instructions to the memory arithmetic and logic unit and input output devices it manages the steps involved in processing data all right students so control unit is nothing but it's controlling the entire process of the computer it controls the various parts connected to the computer like the monitor mouse scanner we can relate this with a human brain as well as we know a human body is comprising a human body comprises of various parts like hands legs nose head mouth lips ear 
right the moments for all this body parts are controlled by the brain the brain sends and receives information or send signals for the various parts of the body to perform it accordingly similarly in computers the control unit is controlling all the parts of the computer such as the monitor mouse scanner keyboard etc and the main task or the main purpose of control unit is to handle various operations it will provide instructions to the memory or depending upon the instructions it will pass on the message or the signal to the different parts or the components like input output devices or arithmetic or logic unit so it overall controls the processing of the various parts of the computer and various devices this is how a cpu looks so it is controlling all the parts of the computer let's take a look at the arithmetic and logic unit this component performs various arithmetic and logical operations such as addition subtraction multiplication division and comparison so alu which is the short form for arithmetic and logic unit alu it is responsible for the calculation parts the computing part like addition subtraction multiplication division comparison and so on so forth so alu is responsible or it's a component which is handling or taking care of the calculations part of the computer see here the cpu is divided into various components of which the alu is where the arithmetic and logic operations are carried out on the data let's take a look at the memory unit what is memory unit the memory unit is used to store data there are different types of storage units in which data can be stored these are classified as primary storage and secondary storage all right students the name as it suggests or as it says memory unit it is something to do about the memory the memory is used or required to store data right in cell phones also we see we have internal storage then external storage similarly in computers also the memory unit is is classified into two types primary storage and secondary storage so let's see what are primary memory primary memory is the memory that is directly accessed by the processor the primary memory stores the current data that is being processed the different types of primary memory are random access memory and read only memory so primary memory consists of two types random access memory which is known as ram and read only memory which is known as rom why primary because this memory is directly accessed by the cpu it's attached on the motherboard the processor can directly access this memory because it is directly connected on the motherboard what a secondary memory secondary memory is the memory that cannot be directly accessed by the processor it is non volatile which means that the data is not lost when the system is turned off it is slow and cheaper as compared to the primary memory the different types of secondary memory storing hardware includes hard disk compact disk and pen drives Right, students. Secondary memory is 
something which cannot be directly accessed by the processor the control the central processing unit or the control unit these memories are non volatile non volatile means which cannot be erased easily here it says which means the data is not lost when the system is turned off now in primary memory we have ram random access memory as the name says random so this memory is volatile what it means is this memory is utilized only till the time the application or a particular program is open for example when you're using computer you open microsoft word so the amount of memory that is required for the microsoft word application to run is utilized by the ram even in cell phone students you may have seen the specifications 6 gb ram 8 gb ram 12 gb ram 4 gb ram right so these are volatile memory by volatile i mean to say whenever you open any application or you doing some work the memory which get utilized for that particular application is utilized by ram as soon as you close that application the memory is lost and it becomes back it is available back for your use rom is something read only which you cannot do anything it's just for read only purpose and secondary memory is something which we can store and erase data as per our requirement secondary storage includes hard disk compact disk cds pen drives the data on these devices stay as far as we want take a look the types of computer memory primary memory ram and rom secondary memory includes punching device magnetic tape floppy disk optical disk hard drive flash disk this is just an example to illustrate we'll proceed further with the activity type which says identify the input process and output in the following example i'm sure students by looking at the picture you are able to identify what part of uh, what function the three diagrams are for so write the first one as it's in the oven it's in the machine inside something happening that's process the baked product that you see the second picture is the output and the third is the input in the form of the batter or the dough if you take a look on the next page you also have one example or one more example which is making a tea or a coffee we all can relate to this example some students may prefer to have tea some students prefer to have milk some prefers to have coffee right so we all know the process of making tea or coffee if not then i'm sure your mother will help you in this you may have seen your mother in the kitchen making tea or coffee right three processes again input process and the output so the first one in the form of input the coffee powder or the tea powder sugar and milk are poured into a vessel now some may just boil the water tea and the tea powder and the sugar and then we pour milk some may mix all the ingredients together and then prepare it accordingly so depending upon the flavor and the taste we prepare it the idea is to understand the process involved right in the second step in the process what we are doing the vessel is then placed on a stove the ingredients are brought to a boil with the help of stove's heat so with the help of heat we are boiling this ingredients 
and after this processing the coffee or the tea is ready to be served which is the output right so try relating these examples in computer terminology that there's some input happening for that input data there's some processing happening to the machine level language and then again as in the form of output we get the data so this is all about the working of a computer like different parts and components involved in the working of a computer continuing on the same line central processing unit we will continue further however as we finished chapter 1 i would want you to understand the exercise part students if you take a look at your exercise part here is the answer i will send this answer to you in your notes however while we are doing the video i just want you to understand this important instruction as going forward i will send the answers in the form of this image all you have to do is take a look at this picture and accordingly write down the answers like the first a the practice time it's the process output and input which we just saw here yeah. this is how you will write then followed by your a is fill in the blanks to so the first one a computer is a dash device you will write electronic so this is how you will complete your notes going forward so i believe we are clear with the instructions as to how we need to complete our notes now students going or moving further in continuation with what we learned in the previous part about the components of the cpu we have the continuation part on page number 13 so i request all the students to kindly move to page number 13 where we will continue from the last lecture we stopped at various devices so as we were as we are learning about the components of the cpu the central processing unit and storage devices let's continue further and we will complete chapter number 1 and chapter number 2 in simultaneously so i'm sure we are ready on page number 13 let us continue processing device cpu is referred to as the brain of the computer the cpu takes the input and processes the information as required to provide an output it communicates with the input and output devices to send and receive the data right as we just learned the cpu is the brain of the computer it comprises of various components like right? the alu memory and the control unit so what it is doing is it's nothing but it's taking the input and processing the information as required to provide an output it is a communicator between the input and output devices Here is the image of a CPU cabinet. Right towards your right, you can see the CPU cabinet, the black box. This is known as the CPU cabinet, and CPU is installed. It's a chip installed on the motherboard. Let's see what are storage devices. Storage devices are the computer hardware. that are used to store data such a device can be found inside a computer or can be attached from the outside these are also known as storage media different types of storage devices are as follows so again storage devices are nothing but it's a hardware component that is used to store data they can be internal as well as external 
storage devices are also known as storage media the different types of storage devices are we all have seen these types of devices we will understand what are the terms for those devices so let us turn our page the first one is the floppy disk it is a type of magnetic disk that is used to store data and programs it is a soft flexible disk that is also removable and thus portable right so floppy disk i'm not sure if we may have seen a floppy disk or no as floppy disk where Uh, currently they are obsolete obsolete means they are no longer in use however floppy disk can be termed as the first storage medias which we used in ancient times we still use floppy disk however the storage size is not sufficient enough to store large amount of data but still it is a device it's one of the storage device which can be removed and it it is a removable device hence it is known as also a portable device portable is something which you can carry or plug into any system at any given point in time now these disks are soft and flexible right as you may have seen on your debit card on the flip side of the debit card you see there is a black strip and those strips are known as the magnetic strips on which the card reader's information is stored similarly in a even in a floppy disk there is a magnetic disk which stores the data the next storage medias is compact disk which is known as a cd or a digital versatile disk which is dvd students we all have heard about cd and dvd exactly so the full form of cd is compact disk and dvd stands for digital versatile disk and what are these let's understand we have seen like a cd or a dvd what's the difference let's read a compact disc or digital versatile disc is a flat round and portable storage device it is used to store data using optical storage where a laser is used to read and write information all right so a cd or a dvd is a flat round and portable storage device we all have seen this it is used to store data using optical storage now what happens in this in this technology the data is written using lasers so that's why it's known as optical storage when a laser is used to read and write information relating this you all have seen a xerox machine a photocopy machine when the shopkeeper keeps the document under the scanner or that glass surface you see a beam of light passes through it those beam of lights are nothing but those are the lasers which are reading the documents similarly in a cd or a dvd the data is written or read in the form of the lasers with the help of those lasers that's why these are known as optical storage media or optical storage devices cds you can mostly record sounds and dvds it is digital and you can watch a video as well the next storage media is the universal serial bus which is the short form usb right usb drive we all have seen a usb drive like a pen drive right so the full form of usb is universal serial bus 
वॉट इज यू एस बी यू एस बी और यूनिवर्सल सीरियल बस ड्राइव इज अ डेटा स्टोरेज ड्राइव दैट कंसिस्ट ऑफ फ्लैश मेमरी फ्लैश मेमरी रेफर्स टू वेन अ डेटा इज सेव फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम इवन इ डिवाइस इज पावर्ड ऑफ वन सर्च एग्जाम्पल इज अ पेन ड्राइव दैट इज अ लाइट वेट एंड पोर्टेबल यू एस बी डिवाइस इट कैन बी यूज टू स्टोर डॉक्यूमेंट्स मीडिया फाइल्स सॉफ्टवेयर एक्सेट्रा All right, students. So USB again, as the name suggests, universal serial bus. Right? If we try to relate it to a bus, what is a bus used? We use the bus to travel from one distance to the another place, one from one place to another place. Similarly, the data in a pen drive can be carried from one place to another place, making it portable. is a lightweight so you can carry it in the pocket and you can connect it to the any part of the any pc anywhere in the world that's why these are known as universal serial bus no matter which part of the world you go to the connecting media or the port will always be the same it is used to store data like documents media files software etc flash memory again like in a pen drive once you connected to the computer you download your data and then after you disconnect it it still the data is still there on the pen drive it does not get deleted unless and until you delete that data or it gets corrupted the device gets corrupted and that's why it's known as flash memory which means the data is safe for a long period of time even if the device is powered off even if the pen drive is not connected to the computer it will still continue to save your data the next one is the hard drive hard drive is a storage device used to hold large volume of data it makes use of one or more rapidly rotating magnetic disks to store and retrieve information in a computer the operating system software and most other files are generally stored in hard drive a hard drive is again a storage device which is used to store or hold large volume of data unlike the floppy disk cd dvd or a pen drive hard disk is a device which rules the entire storage media because hard drives are available in huge sizes like the hard disks are available in 1 terabytes or 500 terabytes which is a huge amount of data that can be stored on these devices hence hard drives becomes easier to store data like your operating system or softwares most of the files are generally stored on the hard drive now how hard drives are stored in data as you can see in the picture it has a rotating magnetic disk and a platter the device there is something pointed which are known as platters we will understand this in your higher standards for now just for your information the data is stored using a rotating magnetic disk so with this we conclude our chapter number 2 as well various devices of the computer or types of devices right students even in this exercise or before we move on to exercise take a look at the secondary memory or the secondary storage devices like hdd hard disk drive CD, DVD, the compact disc or digital versatile disc, an SD card, pen drive, right? Blu-ray disc, floppy disc. These are the examples of secondary storage devices. Moving on to the exercise part, students. Again, here is the answers for chapter number two.
this is how you will write as you can also see students i have underlined few words and sentences so i request all the students to kindly underline these words or sentences and write them in your notebook in a neat and clean handwriting i will send you the instructions however this was just to let you all know in the form of video so that you remember it and follow it accordingly until our next lecture students thank you very much for your time be healthy and be safe thank you once again